According to Ephesians chapter 6, the choice of weapon for the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of you and on the inside of me is the Word of God. Hello, I'm Pastor Gray, pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church of Longview. In just a moment, you're getting ready to go into the service here at Emmanuel. And guess what we use to give the Spirit to work in our lives? The Word of God. I trust that the sermon you're about to hear, that God's Spirit will use it as His sword, and according to Hebrews, that it will get down into us and it'll start working in us, dividing asunder, and will do His perfect work. May the Lord bless you as you listen to the truth of God's Word. Go to John chapter 8 is where we're going today, John chapter number 8. And I appreciate the parents with your babies in the auditorium. And I'm okay with the babies crying. Don't even worry about that. It doesn't bother me a bit. The only thing I have a problem with is when the men start crying, then I got a problem with that. And uh, so if your husband starts crying, take the pacifier that you would put in the baby's mouth and kind of take it over and stick it in his mouth. Amen. And, uh, but we praise the Lord uh, for you being here. Kinsey, I think you win the prize, sister, uh, for the hair. Um, come on now. I saw you walk through the back door and I'm like, mm, love the hair. And I assume that it's a wig. Okay, I just want to make sure that you didn't go to the beauty parlor and have that done for one day. Uh, so John chapter 8 and verse number 31. And pray for Brother Poncho. Uh, he thinks that's a red jacket. And uh, so uh, I'm not going to tell him anything else. Uh, but uh, Brother Poncho, would you... Uh, I, I need some more water on the platform, if you don't mind. No, no, brother, I, I can't leave the sacred desk. Could you come and just grab, come on, brother, just come grab me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And uh, come on, come on, just, just on this 4th of July, I, I, I have to do the work of God, and I can't leave the sacred desk. And uh, y'all, he truly thinks that's red. And uh, when he stepped in today, I thought, I am so going to pay him back for every poncho punch I have received through the year, and I just am very hoarse, and <laughs> give Brother Poncho a hand, and uh, I've been waiting 25 years to get one over on him, and uh, how many's ever been ponchoed? What that means, he's gotten you at some point. Would you raise your hand? Okay, that is payback, my friend. So John chapter 8 and verse 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and we, never, and we were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou? Ye shall be made free. Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Here in verse number 32 and in verse number 36 are the two co-texts for today. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then verse 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And ushers, I'll let you have a seat. The 4th of July is commonly known as Independence Day. During the 18th century, what, we now, what now we call the United States of America was only known as colonies. When the colonies were first settled, they were allowed to develop freely to some extent without hardly any interference from Britain. But things abruptly changed in 1763. Britain suddenly decided that they needed to take more control over the colonies. Britain decided the colonies needed to return revenue to the mother country and that they needed to pay for the colonies' defense, which was being provided for at that time by Britain. However, the colonies did not agree with these new rules at all. They felt that they were not represented in Parliament adequately and that to pay any kind of tax to the mother country was not right. Therefore, hence the phrase, 
no taxation without representation. When Britain continued to tax the colonies, the colonies decided to form what we know as the First Continental Congress to persuade Britain to recognize their rights. If you are not going to give us a voice in politics, then you, we should not pay tax. When this didn't work, war was declared, and this was known as the American Revolution. After the First Continental Congress failed to persuade Britain to recognize colony rights, and then the war was declared, then everything started heating up. Many people who were both considered moderates and radicals had decided that enough was enough and that any kind of taxation was without representation was considered tyranny. People such as John Adams, Samuel Adams, Ben Franklin, as well as a group called the Sons of Liberty, decided that it was time to unite all the colonies and to stand together against Britain. During the course of the American Revolution, a second Continental Congress was formed. It is this group that adopted the final draft of the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence was drafted by John Adams, Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Robert R. Livingston, and Roger Sherman. After the first draft was written by Thomas Jefferson, it was revised by Ben Franklin, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson before it was sent to the Congress for approval. All 13 colonies stood behind the Declaration of Independence and adopted it in full on July 4th, 1776. For 245 years, our country has lived independent as a free nation. But we have not been free without a cost. We are free because we were willing to pay a price. However, the 245 years of our country's existence, we have experienced a, a, a continual decline into spiritual bondage. I do not stand before you as a politician. I do not stand before you as someone that is an expert of what goes on in the political arena. But I do stand in front of you as a pastor, along with every evangelist and every missionary and everyone who's ever taught a class and opened the Word of God, that we all recognize that without God, we would be in a worse spiritual condition than we are right now. Think with me, please. 245 years of people proclaiming God in the gospel and look at the deplorable state our country is in. No wonder God, in Genesis chapter 6, was grieved in his heart when he saw that the wickedness of man was only evil continually. Now, please do not mistake Genesis 1 through Genesis chapter 6, and although it's only a very few amount of pages in your Bible, and they are very thin when held between your index finger and your thumb, that six chapters represents 1,600 years. We've only been a country for 245. Look at the condition that we're in. No wonder God destroyed man after 1,600 years. Ladies and gentlemen, could you imagine what kind of state this country is going to be in if the Lord does not come back? And we have to do this. We have to do this over and over again. What the British could not do to our country by taxing us into physical submission, the devil has done by vexing us into spiritual submission and servitude. Well, let me read that again. What Britain could not do to us by taxing us into physical submission, the devil has done by vexing us into spiritual submission and servitude. The thing that kicked Britain out of this country, the thing that gave us our freedom was not 12 of the 13 colonies, but 13 of the 13 colonies rallying around this thought. 
We don't want to be dominated by another country. We want our freedom. Our, our motto for this year for Emmanuel Baptist is one accord. And on this July 4th, I'm going to ask you to recognize as a member that we are trying to be dominated by another person. We are trying to have, somebody is trying to invoke their will upon our lives. And ladies and gentlemen, we just can't be 90% on the same page. We just can't be 99% on the same page. We have to be 100% on the same page. We have to come together, and we have to know that we need a spiritual revolutionary war and declare our spiritual independence from the tyranny of the flesh, the world, and the devil. Jesus comes to a group of believing Jews in John 8, and he becomes to the Jews that were non-believing, and he tells them about this freedom. Verse 32, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. When Jesus speaks this to them about freedom, they immediately equated the word freedom to their physical liberties. That They immediately said to them in verse 33, we be Abraham's seed, and we and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? They immediately thought about who they were and their heritage. Please listen to this, dear Christian. Listen. You and I experience the same thing today. Pastor, we live in a free country. How could we ever be in bondage? I don't need to be set free. Jesus was not talking about their earthly lineage. You know what he was talking about? Their spiritual man. Jesus wanted them to know that it is possible to walk around free and still be a slave. It is possible, my friend, to walk around free and still be in bondage. It is possible for mankind to be enslaved. Let me tell you something. That is what America has right now. America is in the condition she's in because mankind is walking around in bondage. They're in bondage in their mind. They're scared. This pandemic did nothing more than tie us down. I, I am not telling you that it's not real. And I'm not telling you that people that are at, at risk in their health, that you need to take precautions. And I'm not telling you that when you get sick, you need to take care of it right away. It, is, it has taken two of our members. This is real. But let me tell you something. Don't live in fear. Don't live in fear. And people are walking around our country, and the pandemic is just a one one hundredth of the bondage people are in. And there are people walking around, and their faith factor is low, and their fear factor is high. Did y'all hear that? Their faith is low, and their fear is high, and the devil knows exactly how to scare everybody to put them in bondage to wear spiritual things, and God doesn't pick up in our society. He is a master at sending notifications and alerts on your phone that will scare you half to death. Kelly and I were together and, and, and yesterday and Friday, and all of a sudden a notification popped up about, about the killing in Tyler, that they caught the people that killed people in Tyler at the restaurant. Let me tell you something. When I saw that, immediately fear set in. And it was like, oh, good night. You know what I started doing? How, how close is Tyler to Gladewater? Y'all with me? How, how close is this to us? And this fear... And all of a sudden, the devil has put people in fear in their soul. We have lost the art of being friendly in this country. The further north you go, I'm here with me on this one. The further north you go, when you say, hey, y'all, they back up and go, what do you want? We were in Maryland not too long ago preaching. Well, Kelly was preaching. I was singing, amen, and uh, no, okay, I'll be honest. I was preaching her sermon, and uh, so I had to get right first. But, but we were out, and I said, hey, how y'all doing? It's a great day outside, isn't it? They, they were backing up, like, and they, they started to grab their wallet, like, mm, what is going on? Do you know what's happened? Is that we've been put in fear, 
And for you and I in this little East Texas community to where we can say hi to somebody, and when somebody doesn't say hi back to us, you know what we look at them and say? You're a foreigner, aren't you? Are you one of them Yankee people? How many used to live up north? Would you raise your hand? See, you got here as quick as you could. But it's true. The reason our country is in trouble is that we have lost the spiritual principle of love thy neighbor as thyself. Do you know who did this to us? The devil did this to us. And the devil knows you may have freedom, but I'm going to put you in bondage. This is what our country is. And, and, then, and then they're in bondage in their spirit. They, they don't know how to trust people around them. Then they're in bondage in their body. The Lord, the devil knows how to give people addictions. And this is why Emmanuel Baptist Church is vitally important. Did y'all hear that? That's why you can't discount church. Listen, you can't discount church. You can't retreat to an isolation of my family and my house. No, no, no. If you're born again by the grace of God and you name the name of Jesus Christ, then Jesus meant for you to be part of a colonization, and he meant for you to be part of a house, and he meant you to be part of a force that we get together and say, hey, let's get the gospel out to the lost and dying world, and let's be a step for Jesus Christ, and let's do something, and this ought to mean something to you, and that's why church is very important. Jesus did not die for the Senate. He did not die for the Congress. He died for believers. And it's very clear that he shed his blood for the church. And there is something beautiful about a church. And Emmanuel, when you start saying, why does our church exist? Our church exists to use our freedom to go get people out of spiritual bondage. That, that's why I love when people walk through our doors. I heard the testimony twice this morning. As I was meeting with people twice this morning, I heard it, and they said this, Pastor, when I walked into Emmanuel Baptist Church, I knew this was the place that I could thrive as a believer. Why? Because our church gets it. We're not here for social programs. We're not here to run for the office of, of, of a senator. I'm not here for that. That's not the job here. I remember one time I invited a politician in the early days of pastoring, and, and I invited him to come address the crowd. Well, when somebody addresses the crowd and they speak, then, then I give them a love offering to show them I love them. I had no idea. He's a politician. So I handed him an envelope, and he stuck that envelope in his pocket. I wrote him a nice thank you letter on the inside, and I wrote him a check. For $200. So our church could just let him know we love you. Brother Hicks, when he opened that envelope, he hunted me down with his aid and said, I can't take this money. That's considered a bribe. And I was like, like, would somebody explain the game, the rule of these games? To, I don't even know how that I wasn't trying to bribe you. I was just saying thank you. Listen, our system to some degree. Anybody who is in political office that is a Christian and trying to do it right, they are facing a resistance. But that resistance shouldn't be felt here. Let me, the Lord has saved us. We've got two freedoms. We're not only in a free land, but we have a spiritual freedom. And this spiritual liberation, this thing that we must unite on, Emmanuel Baptist Church, I'm calling you on July 4th to lift your eyes above the political tyranny and understand there is spiritual tyranny. We have to go to war and make sure that the devil does not win in this free society. Now, don't, don't, don't mistake this. We've got battles right now we're facing as a country. Do you know at 9-11, after that, the battle was about Sharia law. Do y'all remember that? Remember that day I was preaching about the Koran, and a guy stood up on that front back when he, Brother Bagwell will, will remember this, Brother Spencer, he stood up, flipped his phone up, and he starts saying something about Allah. How many remember that? 
He come walking down that side right there. And I'm preaching away about Allah, Allah, my foot, Islam, da, 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 da. And I was waxing eloquent. And do you know a preacher's stand is put to the test when somebody's resisting it? And I, my, I caught him coming out of the right. He has that phone flipped up, and he's saying, praying to Allah. And I'm thinking to myself, he's coming across that center aisle right there, and I'm thinking, where is security when you need security? They've all run for the hills. And I'm thinking to myself, if he gets to that center aisle and turns this way, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm preaching and praying and thinking, and praise God, he got to that aisle. Turn, looked at me, and then turned and went out that back door. When I saw I had him on the run, I was all into it right then. Let me tell you something. We're facing it. But back then, it was Sharia law. Sharia law said they wanted to take pockets of our country and tell our country, you have no rights inside here. We're going to let Islam and Sharia law take over here. Y'all listen to this. The political issues in this country are very, very real. Who would even know that abortion would even still be on the, on, on the minds? Who would have thought that our country back then when it was passed wouldn't have rose up and kicked it out? You see, we are facing political issues. We are facing them right and we are facing them left. Who would have ever thought that transgender is even an issue. Can, can we just be honest? You can now say that you were there when America took a dip to put a transgender in the cabinet of the United States of America. This is incredible. And now we have critical race theory that's trying to creep its way in to everything that we're doing. Look, critical race theory in the 1960s, this is how old this is. Y'all listen now. This is how old this is. And all it was designed to do back then was to make sure that our society and our laws were not discriminating. It was simply to make sure. And by the way, it did its job. Did y'all hear that? It made sure that black people were not discriminated against. It made sure. And our society was wrong back then. Are y'all okay with that? Or are you a racist? Our society was wrong back then. It was wrong to tell somebody because the color of their skin go sit in the back of the bus. It was wrong. Are y'all okay? It was wrong back then to tell a black person you got to go to that bathroom. This is wrong. But critical race theory through the years... Now that pendulum has swung all the way to this way to now they want to hold you and I accountable for our great-grandfathers being racist. Listen to this. I'm not a racist. There's not one prejudice bone in my body. And if great-great-great-great-great-grandpa Gray was a racist, then great-great-great-great-great-grandpa Gray was wrong for being a racist. I think racism needs to be dealt with and defined in every generation and then left alone, and then the next generation has to deal with their shortcomings. But this is what's going on. Did I lose some of y'all when I got political? Is that okay? I understand it. But I am telling you that out of all these issues, there's a bigger issue. Do you know what that issue is? Spiritual bondage that takes people to hell. This is the bigger issue. And it's not the church's job to champion causes of political nature. It is the church's job to go to the heart of every ill will, ill, ill doing in our society. You know what the heart of that is? A lost man will do lost things. And a society without Jesus Christ will develop into pre-flood society. Give it enough time. And I'll tell you, there's something bigger than you voting once a year, once every two years, or once every four years. It is you taking the gospel track and handing it to somebody every day you're out. 
every day. Amen, Pastor. Every day. Talking to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think this is when we cut to the heart of what is going on in our country. And on this July 4th, I just want to let you know that we can set people free of the real bondage. But God's blessed us. Nobody's going to stop you and ask you for your papers. You can go to Shreveport. Nobody's going to stop you when you cross that line. You can talk to anybody about Jesus Christ anywhere you want to. This is what we're called to do. There are three things about our text that I want to give you that I want you to hold on to. The first one is in John 8, 36. Look at this. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free. The first thing I want to tell you is spiritual freedom is because of Jesus Christ. It is not because of how you train your kids. It is not because we act right. It is not because we have a set of rules at the house. Spiritual freedom is because somebody knows Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Jackson right now is free. But bigger than that, he's got the power on the inside to stay free. You see, how many church kids have grown up in church and then they've gone out and got into bondage. This shouldn't be. If you're here and you can name the name of Jesus Christ, you've got the power to stay free. You've got the power to stay spiritually free. So the first thing is spiritual freedom is because of Jesus. If we want East Texas to stay free, then every church needs to go on the on onset. And if every church would simply get out and take the gospel and just take them, take it everywhere you go. Do you know what's really sad? Is that the Mormons and the Jehovah Witnesses are more active in peddling a false religion than those of us with the truth. That is only a comparison to say this. We need to get active. I was driving from Panama, David City, to a, to a little town three hours, two hours north on the Costa Rican border of Panama. And it was, I was preaching a camp, and I, we were not far at all from there. And uh, somebody couldn't go years ago. And, and so they called me and said, hey, can you, can, it's a drop of a hat. I said, look, could you, could you just go? And so I started heading that way. And uh, we are in the middle of nowhere. Y'all, we are in the middle of like nobody. And sitting in the middle of a field just south of Costa Rica was a Jehovah Witness church. Newsflash, they don't believe in pledging allegiance to our country. But sitting in the middle of a field, I was with people who didn't speak any English. And so when I got to the camp, the only guy that spoke English there was my interpreter. And I said, hey, hey, I got a question for you. On the way from David City to this camp, I didn't see one Christian church. I didn't see one Baptist church. But I saw a Jehovah Witness church. And you know what he told me? They're all over the place. And here is why. Because Christians sit in their eternal security and don't realize we have the answer. And that answer is Jesus Christ. The second thing I want to tell you is spiritual freedom starts with an individual decision. It, it, it's your individual decision. And that decision you have to have on the inside is this. I, right now, am going to start exercising the fact that I'm a believer on the inside. And I am going to start interacting with that Savior that's on the inside. If the Son therefore, look what it says, if the Son therefore shall make you what? Free, ye shall be what? Free indeed. Let me ask you a question. What bondage are you in this morning? What is it on the inside that you just can't overcome? What is going on with you that you're free as an American, but on the inside you just can't seem to break through? You've got those things on the inside that you're like, I've struggled with these things for years. Listen, this freedom is only because of your choice to interact with Jesus Christ. That's it. And if you're sitting here and you don't know Christ as your Savior, 
Today's that day that you ask him to be your savior. But dear Christian, listen, nobody should be living in bondage. Nobody should be living with any besetting sin that now is reigning. You know know what the Bible says? The Bible says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies. Sin exists in your life, but don't let sin reign. Don't, also, I'm going to let you be sin, okay? Come here, man. I, I know. I know. It's terrible, terrible. If Austin is sin, watch this, then sin, don't let it occupy, sit down. don't let it occupy the throne. Reign, R-E-I-G-A. Don't let it reign. And there are a lot of people right now that sin has reigned for so long that you think you're powerless. You truly think that you have no way out. And that's not true. Listen, that's not true. You say, but you don't know how long I've been an addict. You don't know how powerful God is to kick that off your life. And on this July 4th, the whole thing about July 4th is some, at one point, people in our country with 13 colonies, people in our country, they said this, we no longer want England to control us. And those, they stood up and they did something about it. But it was this conversation happening with this conversation. Can you imagine those conversations? Hey, did you hear England's going to take part of your money and part of my money? And they want, hey, did you hear? And all of a sudden, it was a grassroots spreading of this tyranny and there were people that didn't know listen there were people that didn't know but when that word started spreading then the consensus started rising up like this that's not right that's not right and somebody needs to do something about it and on this july 4th spiritual freedom spiritual freedom is because of jesus christ individual spiritual freedom is when you go to God and you say I'm done with this controlling me my question to you is what is the this is it your anger is it your lust what is the this she said, but Pastor, you should understand, I got a problem in this area, and it's always been in my, in my, in, in my life, and my daddy had this problem, my granddad. No, no, no. Don't, don't do critical race theory to your sin. Confine it to your life. Your choice puts you here because you're human. But your choice to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior gave you a power. Greater is he that is in you than he that is what? In the world. And if you're saved, you're sealed by the Holy Ghost of God. Sin can be kicked off the throne of your life. Don't let it reign. But this comes from your choice to interact with Jesus. And I hate to tell you this, I'm going to play Jesus, okay? And and, and interacting, watch this. I'm going to push you off the front. Don't break a leg, please. And Push it off. You say, but pastor, come back up. Pastor, I'm good for a couple of days. Then all of a sudden, it's sitting back down. Listen, when you're aware it now is raining again, then guess what you do? You come back again by the power of God, and you're just like, get off there. Get off, get off, get off. Stephanie, I hope that's okay. Has he been needing that for a long time? Okay. (laughs) Hey, this is, watch me. This is what we do. You can't get discouraged. And if every day, but the moment that you're like, okay, okay, I'm good. I'm good. It's not raining in my life. And you let the word of God rain in your life. And then all of a sudden you realize that that sin has made its way back up. He's not going to like this illustration. You realize sin has made its way back up. Listen, the very first moment that the Holy Spirit goes, I love it when you cross your legs at this juncture. That he, okay, this is gold. This could not have worked out any better. The moment that he's like, hey, I got this down. I got this thing. Let me tell you something. Then that's the moment that you say, 
I'm not living this way. And then you just come back and <laughs> have a seat. You got too cool up here. You got too, you got too chetho up here. Amen. So, spiritual freedom starts with your individual decision. Then the third thing I want to tell you is this. Spiritual freedom is because of Jesus. Spiritual freedom is when you interact with Jesus. And then spiritual freedom will come out in your body. It will come out in your body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost of God. And what, isn't it crazy, y'all? Isn't it crazy that all this spiritual problem now is coming out in the body of our country? Do you know the only hope is? It's for you to be set free. And for you to interact with Jesus Christ on whatever is reigning in your life, and then guess what it's going to happen? It's going to come out in your body. But you know the first place it comes out? Are you ready? It comes out in your spirit before it ever comes out in your body. I was, the past couple of weeks, I've been preaching in front of teenagers, and, and for whatever reason, the Lord has just allowed me to be in front of a lot of teenagers this summer, and and uh, with the college, and, and I think it was God just bringing it all together. And um, I, I, I found it very interesting yesterday. I'm going to tell a story from yesterday. Yesterday afternoon, I finished up a meeting in Tenaha, and, and, uh, and Kelly and I, and I was on my way out. And this kid came up to me, and, and he said, I have really enjoyed this conference. I just really have enjoyed it. You could tell his spirit was just, just exuberating. And I said, tell me about it. He said, I truly think Jesus can help me in my life. But here is the crazy thing about it. Are you ready? In his pocket, he had an e-cigarette. He had a vapor. He had one of these vapors in his pocket. And he looked at me and he said, now, he pulled out the vapor, and he said, now, I love it. Looked around like this, and he goes, now, my body's not there, but I'm getting there. And then put it back in his pocket. Do you know the first place that freedom comes? It comes in your attitude. It comes in your attitude. Do you know the first place you become in bondage with? Your attitude. That's why people have free bodies and they look like they're okay, but their attitude is in bondage. Do you know what this is doing? It's dragging your body to where your attitude is, but when the Lord's working in a believer's life, the first thing he sets free is that which is going to live eternally, and that is your spirit, and that is your soul, and there's something vibrant about you. Vibrant about you. I was preaching a meeting last year, and this guy came up, and he had a ball cap on, and, and he was just like all about God. And he said, but, but, but I'm, I'm trying to get there. And I was like, okay. When he took his ball cap off, that hair went, boom, came all the way down to us, came down, and, and I was like, whoa, whoa. He said, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You know what I believe? He'll get there. But the thing that ought to concern you and I are believers who are going backwards. Don't go back into bondage. This is July 4th. We are having church at 930. And some of you right now are saying, Pastor, you're three minutes over. We got to go to lunch. Hey, let me tell you something. If therefore the Son has set you free, you're free indeed. I'm going to have the musicians come. Are you spiritually free? Or are you spiritually bound? Then the same Jesus that saves you is the same Jesus that can kick sin off reigning in your life. Our country's success is based on the Christian's spiritual success. We'll never be perfect, but boy, can we give it a good fight. We can give it a good fight. Heads bowed, eyes closed, Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you for this July 4th. I thank you for what you've given us. And God, I am asking you to, Lord, to, to come down. 
and to do something wonderful on this day. I pray that all of us would take inventory of those things we struggle with and help us not to roll over and play dead. And Lord, as I think about our forefathers who said enough is enough, God, may it be enough. May we have a revolution. May we just band together as a church and realize the world is out of control. But Lord, we don't have to be. We don't have to be. That the devil's trying to vex us, trouble us, but help us to stay firm. With our heads bowed and eyes closed. I'll ask the deacons to come if they would. They'll be here at the end of the altar. And I, I would just ask you, if you need somebody to pray with you, if you have something going on in your life, how many right now could say this, Pastor, I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I've trusted Jesus as my Savior. Could you just lift your hands in acknowledgement of that? Oh, I, I'm saved. God bless you. May you put your hands down. Is there anyone here that maybe you couldn't raise your hand? Maybe you're like Jackson for over a year. God was working on his heart. Maybe you're here today and God's worked on your heart and, and you're like, you know, Pastor, I don't know. Something's going on on the inside. If that's you on this 4th of July, could I get you to raise your hand? Could you do that? Anybody like that say, God's working on me. God bless you. Anybody else say, God's been working on me. How many could say this? You know, Pastor, that individual freedom that you talked about and that thing about sin reigning, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but maybe that's you today. Maybe that's you. I would tell you this. That only the power of God can defeat the power of sin. Where you were not able to defeat it by yourself, only God who lives on the inside can help you overcome it. It may be temporarily. It may be seasonally. But don't let it reign. Don't let it occupy. Don't let it control your daily activity. Maybe it's time. Maybe God brought something to your mind. I really hope that you enjoyed the service here at Emmanuel. Thank you for taking the time to tune in. At the bottom of the screen is my cell phone number. If I can do anything for you, please give me a call. I trust that you'll be back with us for the next broadcast. God bless you, my friend. Have a great week.